Hello again. It's uh, Heart of a Libertarian coming from you uh, to you from the uh, Pacific Northwest here on Wednesday, January 9th. Um, I would like to uh, revisit the issue of, of, of gun control. This has been uh, a continuing topic that's being pushed in the media, politicians. Uh, they're all screaming from the same script, grab the guns, grab the guns, confiscate all the guns, ban the guns, whatever, right? Um, it, it's just like it's like it's one big choir at, at, at this point. Um, and I, I wanted to just try and, and, and peel back the onion a, a little bit here and differentiate between the issue of gun control versus gun violence, right? Now, obviously, gun violence is bad. Nobody likes violence. Um, nobody likes when shootings happen or murders or, or, or any other sort of tragedies like that. Those are always bad. Um, but but it, it, there's something, I think, a little bit, uh, a little bit disingenuous going on right now. The, the, the people that you hear... Uh, pushing the uh, pushing the, the the gun ban meme, um, the legislation, the media pundits. Um, it, to be honest with you, I, I really think they could give a rat's ass less about the Sandy Hook shootings or, or any of the other gun violence that, that happens in this country, um, right? On, on, on an ongoing basis, that that's really not their concern. Um, and and I'll, I'll offer you one piece of proof on this. Um, if you go back say, a year and a half ago or so, when the, the whole Fast and Furious uh, mess broke. Um, and if you're not familiar with this, uh, this was basically an operation run by uh, the Obama administration, right, to uh, allow people, to, uh, straw purchasers, to go into gun stores in the, um, in, in the southwest, Texas, Arizona, those places, buy guns, um, semi-autos, AK-47s, AR-15s, and basically allow those guns to walk across the border and into the hands of Mexican drug cartel members, okay? Um, and, and there were over 2,000 that, that, that were admitted um, that walked across. The only reason we found out about this operation was the fact that there were some good folks inside the ATF that, that blew the whistle on this um, and, and, and put a stop to the whole operation. This, this, insane, this insane operation that, that for some reason they came up with. But nonetheless, they did, right? And... These guns went into the hands of these of these murderers and butchers down there and drug dealers, and uh, somewhere around 400 Mexican civilians have now been murdered with these things, right? Directly linked to these weapons. Um, several law enforcement members on our side of the border, and not an, a peep, not a sound from the Piers Morgans of the world or Geraldo Rivera's, uh, the Dianne Feinsteins, or any of the other uh, sort of media, liberal media establishment or, 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 or liberal establishment that, that you've that you find in this country, they said nothing, okay, um, absolutely nothing on this whole thing, this, this, this massive tragedy that, that, that happened. Um, but now all of a sudden, right, now all of a sudden we have an incident and they're all sort of singing from the same, same song sheet. So, so what's going on here, right? It's pretty obvious they, they don't care about gun violence per se, but I think they do care about gun control. And I, I'll tell you what I... What I what sort of changed my thinking around on this in terms of some of the dynamics that were going on. And it was an article that I found uh, from the Daily uh, Market Daily News uh, from a, uh, a while back that was actually dated uh, November 7th. And it is entitled, uh, I'll just try to get it up there in the camera for you, um, Senator Dianne Feinstein moves to ban all assault rifles, high capacity magazines, and pistol grips. And they quote a, a sort of a rumor mill uh, posting from a website called Shooting Wire. Uh, well, they talk about where Diane Stein, Feinstein's uh, legal staff had held some meetings with the FTB and ATF on um, introducing some assault weapon bans le legislation in the Congress uh, once uh, Obama was, was re-elected, assuming that he would be. Um, so basically what this goes to show is that th this, this particular, this legislation, this, this push for this thing ha has been something that's been in the planning stages for months. This just didn't come out of nowhere. Um, because of some shooting in, in Connecticut or because of some guy in a Batman outfit in a movie theater in Colorado decided to, to, to go uh, bonkers on, on a group of people watching, watching, a, um, watching a movie. I, it has nothing to do with that. They could care less about those particular incidents. Um, but, you know, really what this is about, this is about uh, basically just disarming the American people, right? Very much in the same way that they did it. They've done it in England. They've done it in Australia. They're basically after what they term as an assault weapon. It's basically anything. It's a semi-auto, right? And that would include most 22 rifles, um, 
a lot of the different shotguns that are out there, particularly the sporting models, um, uh, most handguns even, right? Most handguns these days are semi-auto, clip-fed, uh, you know, 10-round, 5-round magazine. It doesn't matter. They want all of it, okay? Um, and and, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you perhaps maybe some of the reasons now, sort of now that I've had some time to mull this over and sort of connect some of the dots as to, to why this suddenly is being pushed now. You know, we, we've got a, a, a president... Uh, Barack Obama that has been basically been reelected back into office, and he's in his second term. There's a good chance that they're not going to change the law or anything like that to allow him back in for a third time around. So what the hey, right? Um, let's just go for go for broke. Let's push every push all the, let's push the agenda through, and so that part of that, of course, being the sort of this gun control piece of this. If you if you step back and you look at the, look at the people sort of behind the politicians, right? The the, the business leaders. Uh, and particularly the people on Wall Street, right? Uh, the, the, the Jamie Dimons of the world, the Lloyd Blank finds, and all these other sort of banking leaders, right? And, and their major shareholders, a lot of the you know hedge fund, hedge fund guys, uh, George Soros being one of them, perhaps even. Um, you know, these these guys or, or these these particular institutions have, have been been uh, implicated in massive fraud. I mean, it, it ongoing for for probably, probably decades, right? That that we don't even know about, but we know for at least this last few years that there's been just massive fraud at every turn that these guys have been committing, whether it's been in, in a real estate lending or, or foreclosure gate where they, they take back homes they don't even have the deeds to, or um, uh, stock, stock market manipulation with high frequency trade. It doesn't matter. It, it's all fraud, right? Um, and and even get to the, to the really bad stories about uh, companies or, or banks like HSBC and Bank of America and Wachovia, they, you know, they've all been caught laundering drug money for the, for the, for, for the Mexican mafia, the drug cartels down there. Uh, and HSBC uh, even came out in, in, in their recent, their, their fine, little fine they had to pay, where they had actually been ma la uh, laundering money for, for terrorist organizations for, for, for at least 15 years, right? For Hamas and Hezbollah and, and, and Al-Qaeda of all organizations, the, the ones that we supposedly, the particular organization that we've supposedly been fighting against for the last 10 years, they've been, they've been handling their finances for them, right? Handling, helping them fund whatever, God knows, whatever kind of mayhem these guys are, 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 are have got their fingers in these days. But, so, you know, you, you've got, you've got to see what these people deal with on, on an ongoing basis. You know, they enable the murderers. And, and the drug dealers and the cop killers and the terrorists, you know, they've got their fingers in all this stuff and they're making money at every turn from, from, from basically the worst of human activity uh, that goes on in this world. And they all know, every single one of them know that, 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 that if, if, a, if any, a real investigation were ever done into all the crimes that they've committed, they're all going to prison. They will all go away. They'll be like... Uh, like Bernie Madoff, right, that, that went that's gone away for, for the rest of his natural life. They will never see the light of day again. And this is the this is the last thing they want, right? So in 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 looking, I'm I'm sure, you know, as they've sat around, they've talked around things around the dinner tables or the local bar or wherever they these guys hang out at together. And they've looked around the world and they've seen things like the Arab Spring and they've seen how Gaddafi got toppled and, and Mubarak in Egypt and the guy in Tunisia, I can't remember his name. And, and, you know, and this is going ongoing in other countries over there, too, Syria being the latest one. Um, and then all the sort of the massive social unrest in, in southern Europe, whether it's Greece or it's Italy or it's Spain, you know, daily massive protests, you know, uh, uh, run-ins with the police, riots, you name it, uh, as the economies are just shut down more and more and more because they just keep loading these poor folks up with all the all the – the, the, the trash the banks over there have, basically, right? All the banks deserve a bailout, and the people get the boot. Um, Ireland is another one, right? I mean, their, their economy is imploding. You know, the, the only country probably in the Western world that has really has sort of ducked out from underneath all this fraud and malfeasance has been the small country of Iceland, right? Uh, the people there, uh, when the Ice Age scandal uh, blew up on them, and, uh, you know, the British and some other... European countries came to them and were saying, you have to reimburse us for all the money these guys uh, lost for our citizens. The, you know, the Icelanders basically uh, held a mini-coup peacefully, right, uh, got rid of the, the prime minister and the existing government and uh, kicked the British out, gave them the middle finger, 
And and uh, lo and behold, all the bankers, they're, they're all going to prison. They've all been convicted. They're all going to jail. They've all committed fraud, right? And so coming back to the shores of, of the United States, you know, this recovery that we've been going through, you know, it's, 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 it, it's, it's fake. I'll, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. You know, um, the, the, the federal government and the Fed, you know, they, they print up a, a trillion dollars a year and basically fill this big, giant, bottomless pit of fraud that we've got that's been, that's really been the economy for the last, probably, since probably at least 1980, right? I mean, when the big credit expansion and the deregulation basically, basically began, you know, we've been having this, this, this economy built on fraud and malfeasance, uh, just grow and grow and grow, and the trillion dollars a year they keep printing up is basically to try to fill that hole in or keep it papered over, over to, to give the appearance of normality, right? Um, and someday that will end. I mean, it, you know, we'll, we'll take our, our, our knocks and, and, and our hard medicine, we'll have to hit the fiscal reset button, and they'll be spending cuts, and a lot of these banks will go out of business. But what they're hoping is, is that uh, they can hold things off long enough <laughs> for them to, to, to at least uh, get out of Dodge, loot a few more dollars out of the economy, whatever the case may be. And the, the one thing that, they're, uh, that, that they know is different about the United States than the rest of the European world or the, the rest of the Western world is that uh, Americans have firearms. You know, and they're scared of that, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, the last thing they want is, is an enraged citizenry demanding justice <laughs> for all the fraud and malfeasance that, that's, that, that, that's occurred. And, you know, for, for you folks in, in, in government right now and in law enforcement in particular, let me tell you something. Your pension funds are sitting in full of this garbage, right? I, I, I pray. I pray that, that, that what's been promised to you that you get it because you folks deserve it, right? You put your lives on the line every single day of the week, but these guys are stealing everything. They've committed fraud everywhere. They don't care, right? Um, and they've got a political class in Washington that's basically willing to cover for them no matter what they do. So if you want to know the, the reasons behind things like the, the, the 2012 NDAA where they can disappear people and and, and – hold you indefinitely without charge or, 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 or trial and you know one of the reason why they're, they're coming after the guns now all of a sudden and, and all the surveillance and all this kind of good stuff it's 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 all because it, it's 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 all about control and it's all about uh, keeping the American people away from the people who have actually committed the crimes right um, and and demanding any justice uh, be done for these folks Um any sort, any sort of trial, any sort of, any sort of real investigation. Um, the Department of Justice has been sitting on top of this, uh, this stuff for, for, for years now, um, basically waiting for the statute of limitations to run out, um, and, and, and they've done nothing, right? I mean, no one's been prosecuted in any of these things. Uh, and if they, if, whenever they have like, filed charges, it's been uh, someone, uh, you know, mid, mid to low level usually. Um, certainly nothing, certainly no one from, from, from any of the, uh, certainly no, no senior level executives from any of the large financial institutions uh, out there uh, that are deemed uh, critical to the, you know, financial system as, as it exists today. So anyway, with, with that said, um, that's the reason for the gun push, okay? That's the reason for the gun ban and, 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 and grabbing your guns. It's, it's okay for Obama and Eric Holder and, 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 and that crowd to give guns away to, to drug dealers, and murderers, and, and cop killers, but we cannot trust law-abiding American citizens with their, with their firearms. This is what they're trying to tell us, and it's, it's a bunch of BS. It's really what it is. Um, anyway, with that, I'm, um, we'll end it with that. Um, uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.